guys, welcome back to my channel. Sass here. I'm here to do another review of Love After Lockup. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> the more and more I get into this season, the more I realize that Love After Lockup producers are literally uh, playing with us. They are literally playing with us. They think that we're a bunch of fools, friends. They think that they can get one over on us, but they can't, okay? With these tired, tired characters and tired storylines. Let's just get into it, all right? First, let's talk about John B. Jr. and Gloria. Now, just last week, okay, John B. Jr. went to go see Juliana, his ex-girlfriend. All right, Miss Brown Tone, honey. He was talking about how good she looked, how her body was right. Okay, and he found out. Uh oh, <laughs> I've done messed up. Because see, Juliana ain't about that side chick life. All right. Now he also told his homeboy, what's his name, y'all? Kato. Mm -hmm. He was like, look, I'm going to marry Gloria. All right. Gloriella is going to be in my life. Kato said, look, Gloriella the one that held you down. John B. Jr. also said, when he was in prison, it was Gloriella who held him down. But the minute he seen Miss Brown tone, Miss S. girlfriend, oh, that just went away. He forgot all about that. You want to know why, friends? Well, I'll tell you why. It's Valentine's Day. And for some reason, instead of it being him and Gloriella, Kato and his girlfriend joined in on the action. Brought him some flowers. You know, John B. Jr. brought Gloriella some dollar store candy. Honey, you all know that nasty candy with the one layer. I was like, John B. Jr., you couldn't give her the, the big box of candy that has four layers? You know, went somewhere and got that mildew stained old dried up box of one single chocolate layer candy? Uh-uh. No, sir. So that's when I knew someone right. I was like, mm -hmm, it's about to be some stuff. So, Kato feels the need. Ain't never ever met Gloriana in his life. But he feels the need to insert himself on their relationship. Okay, because see, he knows that John B. J Jr. went to go see the ex. But John B. Jr. told him, you better not say nothing. Okay. So, he knows that John B. Jr. got some feelings for Julia. All right. Now, John B. Jr. also said that he was going to tell Gloriel about this meat. All right. But he ain't told her yet. So, Kato is sitting there inserting his thoughts, ideas, and what he thinks about this whole relationship. John B. Jr. still throwing down inside eye him. Kato's girlfriend is looking at him like, boy, you don't supposed to be saying anything. So Gloria is like, uh, you know, me and John B. Jr. is good. You know, we're looking at food and we're looking at dresses and, you know, the reception and all that. And so Kato was like, oh, well, y'all going to get married, but y'all still making these decisions? Y'all still doing this? You know, that's just a little strange. Gloria should have cussed. Kato out. That's what she should have did. She should have said, who are you to be talking about our relationship? Okay, your name Ben. That's all I need to know. That's what you need to know. Don't be coming up here on Valentine's Day trying to insert yourself on something you know nothing about. So and then, I would have went right on over to John B. Jr. and gave him a piece of my mind. Okay, so Kato he need to go outside and have a cigarette so he gets up. Didn't nobody put no money on the table. So his girlfriend, she needed to go because her man going, she gets up. Didn't nobody put nothing on no table. No money, no nothing. They just got up and they left. I said, mm-hmm. So Gloriana is talking to John B. Jr. Now here comes John B. Jr. with the flip flap. John B. Jr. is saying how he know Gloriana loves him. Gloriana said, boy, what is wrong with you? Are you seriously trying to pick a fight on Valentine's Day? Because that's exactly what he was doing, friends. John B. Jr. was trying to pick a fight. That's exactly what
what he was doing. All right. Instead of taking that moment right there and telling Gloriana that he just seen Brown, honey, okay, he gonna pick a fight. And he is questioning Gloriana's love for him. So he says he gonna go have a cigarette because he, he he's stressed out. He ain't about it, about it. So Gloriana said, well, go on and smoke a cigarette. So he gets up. Okay. He didn't put nothing on the table. I'm like, who paid for the meal? Gloria. So you have his friend, his girlfriend, and John B. Jr. throwing down those little fish tacos. And they didn't even bother putting, you couldn't even pay for the tip. Child. <laughs> so Gloria pays for the food. She goes downstairs. She goes outside, everybody's smoking. Kato's girlfriend is like, listen, you ain't gonna say nothing about Juliana, are you? Kato was like, nah, this ain't nothing but a bunch of flip flam child. Uh-uh, I ain't saying nothing. So, of course, Gloriana confronts John B. Jr. was like, what is that all about? What are you talking about? I'm not understanding this, all right? So, of course, John B. Jr. excuse, excuse, excuse. I just don't feel like she loves me. And then John B. Jr. had the nerve, the nerve to say that he believes Gloriana is a shallow person. That Gloriana is only in it with him because of his looks, his tattoos. Boy, John B. Jr. thinks a lot of himself, don't he? I said, now, John B. Jr., you really think that Gloriana is with you because of your looks? Boy, go play in traffic. Honey, you're four foot ten. You ain't that much of a cutie. You got tattoos all over the place, which I don't mind tattoos. I think some tattoos are sexy. But John B. Jr., that ain't it. Now, I don't know what your body really looking like. I mean, from what I see, this high. But she ain't doing all this because of the way you look, boy. Stop. Okay, stop. Instead of you telling Gloriana why you are picking a fight, instead of just telling her the truth, you sound real dumb and slow. Now, if anything, I think Gloriella truly loves John B. Jr. What woman shows up in the prison with some balloons? Now, that's love. That's love. I think she loves John B. Jr. And I think that John B. Jr. ain't got the cojones to tell her that he seen brown honey. And he done got up some feelings, and now he's scared to tell Gloria. That's the bottom line. And she gets upset. She threw them Walmart flowers and those Dollar General chocolates, and she had enough. <laughs> the whole fight was stupid. All right. So we know right now, John B. Jr. ain't got the cojones. I mean, he talk all hard. He talk like he got a little thug in him. Honey, that boy ain't got no thug in him. Honey, he can't even tell the woman that he wants to marry or so-called love that he went to go see his ex-girlfriend. A whole farce. Let's move on. All right, I'm going to make this under two minutes. Lizzie and Daniel. All right, as we know, Daniel picked out a plastic ring that his mama bought. And so he's going to propose to Lizzie. So Lizzie's dream is to go to Paris or be proposed to Paris, but we all know they ain't going to no Paris. So they go to Destinations Inn, and he picks out a room like Paris. They have the Eiffel Tower. They got this little water fountain. Now me, I found a room tacky. But hey, if she liked it, I loved it because she showed enough like it. She was like, oh my God, this is so beautiful. I cannot believe he thought of this and all this stuff. All right, so he pulls out the ring and he proposed to Lizzie. Now, out of all the couples on this show, those two don't have no business getting married. None whatsoever. Now, he done told Lizzie that he's not ready for kids. Right. He done told Lizzie that they need to wait, wait. And here he is already proposing to Lizzie, child. 
Congratulations to the happy couple. Let's move on. Now, one thing that is a common theme of this show, you don't see nobody going out looking for jobs. Nobody has a job. But guess what, y'all? That is up Josh. How did Josh got him a job? Come on, Josh. Josh told this guy who owns a roofing business, he says, listen, okay, I done robbed the bank. I've been to prison. I done stole over 30 some odd cars, but let me tell you something. I will show up for this job. I will get on top of that roof and I'll be the best darn roofer you have ever seen. And honey, that man said, I'm going to give you a chance, a chance. Only thing I got to say is bravo, Josh, because Josh knows that he's dealing with Cheryl and Cheryl crazy. And I'm thinking that her medication is high. Josh said, listen, I need me a job. At least I can get away from Cheryl a couple of hours, child. I can't deal with her tripolar. Let's move on, okay? Now, let's talk about Amber and Vincent. I'm not going to go through what happened last week. We all know what happened last week. We know that Amber ain't nothing but a full-blown lesbian, all right? So, so Puppy's mama was in the cut. Looking, listening, so Amber was like, listen, I'm going to have to come clean, all right? So she proceeds to tell Puppy's mama that her, Puppy, and Amber's mama ain't nothing but a bunch of cons, okay? They were going to con Vincent, all right? See, this is what they were going to do. She was going to marry Vincent, all right? And that way she could have access to his money. He could get a little bit more money on his military check. And when Puppy and her mama get out, they said, okay, they will have money when they get out. See, ain't nobody talking about J-O-B-S. Ain't nobody talking about that, all right? They talking about marrying a man and take his money. Now, Amber says that she feels like she didn't con Vincent. She feels like it wasn't a con. Well, what do you call it? I call it a con. Okay? You are perpetrating a life to someone. You are perpetrating a whole lie to someone. That's a con. A huge con. Okay? But what do I expect? Of course she's going to say that because that's what she is. She's a con. So she's not going to think what she's doing is wrong. Okay? Now let me tell you something. Vincent. He's not innocent either. Vincent wanted to adopt a whole grown woman. So Vincent is foul as well. But Amber, honey, your hands are not clean. I don't care if you say this ain't a con. That is exactly what it is. Puppy's mama said, are you crazy? Okay. Puppy's mama made an excellent point. She said, this little plan y'all concocted inside the prison was all good inside prison walls. But see, now you're on the outside. See, they're still on the inside. You're on the outside and you got all this on your shoulders. All right? You're dealing with real life and you're dealing with someone with real emotions. And you don't know how that person will react. And that's exactly right. All right? Now, Amber, of course Puppy wants you to do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Because she don't have to do none of the stuff. She don't have to kiss this man. She don't have to touch this man. She don't have to get on her knees for this man. But you do. Okay? So, of course, she's telling you, oh, it's okay. Do it, do it, do it. Even though we all know you don't want to do it. You are repulsed by this man. Okay? You don't even want him touching you. So, Amber, let it be known. That she's supposed to go to a family reunion in Indiana. She's done told her family. She's done told Vincent that he can go. And there's no way out of it. Puppy's mama was like, you sure you want to do it? There's no way out of it. And she was like, what am I supposed to do? How about you tell Vincent that you ain't going to the reunion? <laughs> and you tell your family, listen, I ain't bringing him to the reunion. You ain't bringing him into your bedroom so you can damn sure tell him that he ain't going to the reunion, child. See what I'm saying with the producers? How hard is that to say no? She don't want to stop with this farce, okay? She wants to keep the train going a little bit because she wants money. She's a con artist. 
And she wants to please puppy and she wants to please her mama. And this whole thing is a mess, okay? Vincent looked like he ain't wrapped too tight. So, honey, when he finds out that it was a whole con, what's really gonna happen? Vincent is a mess himself, child. I wanna know what y'all think about Amber and Vincent in this whole situation. Child, a mess. Let's move on. All right, let's talk about the trio of fools 2.0. Now, as we know, Lacey and John, they done had it out. All right. Full-blown argument in the prison parking lot. Honey, John ain't been out of prison in 2.5 seconds, and he already getting slapped upside the head from Lacey. <laughs> ah! So we know Shane, the white knight, he's coming to rescue her because he don't know what the situation is. He don't know how he's going to handle it. So he's going to roll up there, you know, to protect the woman he loves, even though the night before, Lacey was slapping him upside his head in a parking lot, child. But he loves her, and this is the woman he wants to be with, and he's going to fight for his woman. So he gets there. Now, this whole season, Love After Lockup producers have been teasing us with the meetup, okay? Now, we all know nothing was going to happen, okay? Two punks fighting over a bitch, okay? That's all. Tony. He's done lied to her. You know, all this. He's been in jail for four months and he's getting out. All right. She's forgave him. 
who's taking her to pick up the lovely Tony? Tommy. Tommy. <laughs> the fool on the stool who proposed to Angela. She turned him down for Tony. And he's sitting in the driver's seat driving her around like driving Miss Daisy. Let me tell y'all something, friends. These two people are mental health therapists. These two people are the reason why people call staff meetings. Y'all know Angela and Tommy are, that, are the people that when you're in the middle of a staff meeting and you are ready to go, You've been in the staff meeting all of over an hour. And you're like, listen, we got to get up out of here. And then the supervisor be like, do anybody have questions? It's Angela and Tommy. They the ones that have stupid questions. They keep prolonging the staff meeting, honey. Oh, my God. Those are the ones you want to jump in the parking lot. And you know all the coworkers are laughing at them. What are their coworkers thinking when they see this? Foolishness. We have a woman who has labored breathing, who cannot make a decision about a man who has done lied to her, who was with another woman. She's on national TV. She's on national TV trying to beat up housekeeping Amy. But see, Amy was about it. Amy was about that lie. She said, only thing you got is face and opportunity. You better take your feet to the street. Okay, and now she is going back to the guy who preferred to have steak than to sleep with her. And who's driving? Tommy. He said he will always love Angela. Okay, he want to make sure that Tony is the guy for her. He want to make sure that Tony is that guy. He wants to make sure there's no mess behind Tony. Boy. He's out of prison. He just went back to prison. He couldn't even abide by the rules. Okay? Of the halfway house. So, Angela, she says that she has forgiven Tony. She loves Tony. And Tony is the guy that she wants to be with. She also told Tommy, don't you tell Tony that you proposed to me. Okay? That's just our little secret. No one needs to know. It's our secret, even though you did it in front of camera. So they pull up to the jail, and here comes Tony. Tony look like he's four foot seven. Why is all these guys short? <laughs> I'm like, dang, go. Okay, so Tony, he's all cleaned up. He looks a mess. Honey, we have been involved with Angela and Tony for three seasons. Okay. They have drugged this relationship out since season one. Just whack. Just, just. So he gets out, and here's Angela. Tony, this is Tommy. Tommy, this is Tony. He's one of my friends. <laughs> I don't blame Tony a bit for not wanting to kiss that woman, for not wanting to BJ for that woman. Honey, he's trying to protect his penis. Honey, that tooth is razor blade sharp. <laughs> Lord, Lord, Jesus be a dentist. So, they're in a car. And Tommy is trying to drill Tony. All right, Tony says he messed up. Tony says that he know he hurt Angela. Okay, but Angela is the one that he wants to be with because, you know, he don't want to go back to the halfway house. Okay, he needs somewhere to lay his head in that. And he know that Angela is sad, pathetic, and desperate. So, <laughs> he needs somewhere to lay his head at night, okay? So, so, they go to the restaurant, all right? And what did he order? Mr. Tony himself? A steak. Here's Angela. He really does like steak. Oh, He sure do. He sure does, Angela. He likes steak. All right, so there's Angela with Tony, okay, and then there's Angela with Tommy. 
and Tommy is trying to drill Tony. Tommy got a nerve. Tommy, what's wrong with you? You ride around a woman who told you no. You drive around a woman looking for a man who can't even abide by the rules of the halfway house. Looking for a man who was laid out with another woman. Looking for a man who just got out of jail for, for four months. And you riding this woman around. You say that you love this woman. She's your friend. Honey, you look like a fool. Let me tell y'all something, friends. Wherever Angela and Tommy were, they need to be fine. Mental health therapist. All right, guys, that's it. All right. This episode was trash. It was garbage. It wasn't good. It was not good at all. All right. I just want to know what you all think about it. Okay. Let's talk about it down below. All right. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And until next week, friends, bye.